Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Frozen Fortune. Now let's take both feet and jump right into it. So fixture-wise, nothing really much to talk about over the uh, Christmas period. Played a lot of friendlies, obviously, mostly this time against our uh, under-19s and our second side. As always, we mostly lose them because I set most of our first team players available for both teams. I might stop doing that um, just because I think that that's not allowing us to get as many squad players fit as perhaps I would like. So what I might do is start not taking control of them, but picking the lineups uh, for the friendly so that I can set all the players that aren't going to play available for them. But then they'll play against the first team, which means that we get the first team at full fitness. So I think that's going to be important going forward. Now, something I wish I didn't have to talk about, but I do, and it's YouTube. So I've been getting more and more comments lately of people saying that the videos aren't appearing in their sub boxes. And some people were saying that they hadn't seen a video from me since I started this save, which is ridiculous. But it's a little bit less ridiculous when you consider the video YouTube put out just a couple of days ago, talking about the fact that they're only sending notifications and things to people's sub boxes if they are ringing the bell or a select other group of people. So you're not even seeing all the people that you're subscribed to anymore. So cheers for that, YouTube. That's brilliant. And I know this is happening because it's been happening to me as well. I constantly see videos from creators I'm subscribed to on like recommended feed and stuff, but never in my actually subscriptions feed. And it's very annoying. So the only way to get around this, and this isn't me like telling you to do this, but it's just if you're interested in that and do want to make sure that you don't miss a video, then click on the little bell thing below and then hit, oh, what is it? always notify or something like that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, enough of that. Right, so of course we have a double live com today against Ven Sissel and Esbjör. Now, we've obviously got a few bits and bobs to talk about, but it's all good stuff, I promise. I thought I'd talk about this next bit on the finances screen, because you'll notice it is down to £26,000 in the bank. But don't worry, it's all for good reason. The junior coaching budget has been increased, which is amazing. I asked the board if we could improve our youth facilities, and they said yes, and that's going to cost us £85,000 and be done by the end of next season. But that's very, very important, because that's actual facilities increasing too, which is fantastic. The board also let me upgrade our data analysis facilities from non-existent to having one. But I find that weird because we have a data analyst, so I don't understand what the data analysis uh, facility actually adds. Like, what does that do? Does it give you better data analysis? But then I don't understand how that works because it's data. It's either wrong or it's right. Like, I don't know. If anyone knows how the data analysis facility aspect of it works, then do let me know. I'll be very interested in that. And that was going to cost another £100,000. So that's cost us a bit of money, but don't worry. We're going to get plenty more this season, um, hopefully, if we can keep our heads above water. And frankly, even if we don't, we'll get a decent amount. I thought I'd use this moment to uh, improve the club in some way. And I think our projection is still looking pretty solid. Uh, ooh, okay. Um, I guess that's based on me spending loads of money. So that does not really a fair reflection. Now, we also had our youth intake, which we'll be seeing on the screen right about now. It's a fairly solid one. Um... It's not as good as it has been in previous years, but I don't think that's... I think it's actually probably better in some ways. It's just that we've got better players now, so it looks worse overall. But there's one lad that stands out, and I'm going to show you him now. Back to me again. Uh, Morton Larson. Uh, sorry, Morton Lawson. He's a one-and-a-half-star player with five-star potential, which is nice. But things I like about him, um, he's a wingback. He's an actual bona fide wingback. Uh, he's the first player that I've seen come through that actually has wingback listed here. Um, so I guess playing this formation has done the trick for us. And as you can see, he's got seven crossing. It's finally a thing. Decent marking, decent passing, okay tackling, concentration, decisions. He's got a long way to go to improve, and he obviously can't play for us till next summer. But there's potential here. We've signed him up to a proper full-time contract because I ain't losing this kid for now. And I, I think he could be decent. That means we've now got two excellent young fullbacks, uh, wingbacks rather, for the future so and they're both danish too which is really nice It'd be amazing if we could bring through a player that actually won some danish caps that would be incredible final slight downside is that kieran devaney or devaney or however his name is pronounced he's left um he's joined dundalk but <sighs> unfortunately it's one of those situations where i just couldn't get him to stay he wanted 300 pounds a week on a contract length that i'm literally not allowed to offer by the board they'll only let me offer uh two years maximum but most of the time it's one and a half seasons which is annoying but he wanted three years on his contract and he also wanted a minimum of 300 pounds a week and i'm not paying that i'm not playing a guy more than like 50 percent more than our best player in the entire team just to get him to stay it's just not a thing so this is the team we're going to go with for today and you might notice there's a, a lad in here that you may not recognize and that's what we need to talk about right now so I did a little bit of looking in the transfer market once again um, at loan players, and the only ones that once again can sign for us are players that are not from Denmark, but they're happy to come if they're at Danish clubs, they just can't be from Denmark. I really don't know why that is, that's very strange and it will continue to baffle me, um, but still. This is Thomas Ofori. we've managed to get him on loan from Norgela, now he is on £275 a week, which does make him our highest paid player. But he's six foot two. He's got 13 finishing. He is the ultimate target man. And I'm going to move him into the middle for today because that's where that target man kind of player needs to be. He's five stars. We've now got two five star strikers in our team. 
I would have loved to have signed a centre-back, but I couldn't find any African centre-backs at Danish sides. Um, so I thought, you know what, let's just boost the strike force. I nearly signed a guy called Tete, um, who was a midfielder. But then he left and signed a contract with Dortmund. Why would you want to go to Dortmund when you can come to Greenland? I'm also going to start playing a bit more of Søren Dermosa because he's been re-evaluated by my scouts. And they now seem to think he's got five-star potential again. Um, which is weird because he started to drop there, but now he's really making a comeback. So I'm going to try and give him some more game time because he might actually be really, really good. And they just keep changing their mind about him. So in my haste, I've actually forgotten to switch over the players. So we'll... Um, um, I don't know. They're, they're a good side. It's hard to say. We're just going to switch them over. I also forgot to uh, put uh, bets are in. So we're going to switch these two over because I think that Bafuri will be better in the middle as he's got that heading ability. Uh, that's the hope anyway. Betzer is on the bench, so we can bring him on later. Um, that, um, the problem is the match fitness levels just aren't there yet. And that's something I really do need to work on improving. I thought it would improve with the semi-pro status, but apparently not. So question of the day. And today's question is this. Who do you think will win the World Cup? Ah, it's very easy to say Brazil or Germany or Spain, isn't it? Um, maybe it's almost too easy. Uh, you know, I'm going to say Belgium. I, I am. And it's not just because I'm representing Belgium in the FM World Cup, which you can see over on Control God Damage channel. Uh, so look out for that. I'm going to put a link to that in the description as well. Be coming up in a few weeks. Uh, me and a load of other FM YouTubers and stuff will be uh, doing a mock World Cup. So that'll be interesting. I will be Belgium, just in case you're wondering. Um, so yeah, let me know who you think is going to win this year's World Cup. And if you have any ideas for a question of the day, drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QOTD. So opening stages of this game, um, been a bit dull really, hasn't it? Eight minutes gone. Jensen's getting down this wing. We've had the only real shot of the game. Or, oh. Oh. Just going to move this back a little tiny bit. We don't need to know the goal differences, really. Although we have apparently moved up to seventh spot. I assume that's because Skiva are now losing. Jensen. Oh, good Johnson. Right, okay. 14 minutes gone. They've had a couple of half chances. Got to be careful. I am a little bit worried in that, you know, this is the easier of the two games that we've got for ourselves today. And if we don't take something from this one, things could start to get a little bit dicey down at the bottom if the other side start winning. And now we've slipped to ninth. Okay, so halftime, and we've done nothing in this first half. So their best striker got injured, which, which could help us. Hum, hum diddly hum hum hum. Um, I'm going to be assertive with them, trying to get something here. Uh, go on, there we go. That's a bit better. They seem motivated, if nothing else. Borup's not had a good first half. I'm actually tempted to get Betzer on now. Give him his run out right here, right now. Ooh, come on. There we go. Um, number 47, Christ on a bike. Afuri, nobody's really done much up front for us so far. I might just switch Afuri to his target man now and go to a bit more of a longer ball approach, since that's what people suggested us try. So we're going to try that. We're going to go to a bit more long ball. Um, see if we can try to hit Afuri with some long balls up the pitch. Because ah, we just have to do something. We offered nothing in that first half. Diamosa, into the channel. I might get him Carter on for Diamosa soon as well. Um, he's not had the best game so far. Diamosa's long ball. Oh, he takes it short for Afuri. Back for Diamosa. In for Afuri. We just need to get a good ball, and it's not happening here. Nigord. Afuri. Diamosa. Afuri. This is nice football on the edge of the area. Oh, Franson! Well, we nearly got very, very fortunate there, as Alan Franson could have just nicked us a goal, but he couldn't quite do it. Um, at the moment, we'd still be five points above the drop, so it's not the worst thing in the world. But with the next game being against Esbia, which, although we go from 3 0 down against them away from home, I really just think we're going to struggle against them. Although they have slipped a little bit off form. Vale, uh, vale seems to have been this side to beat lately. Here we go. In for Franson. He's got to look over the top. Over the top for Afuri. Afuri's in. One touch. Two touch. Oh, what a chance that was. Best chance of the game for either side. Considering they've had a lot of shots, they've not really done a lot with them. Um, that was amazing. Alan Franson now with the shot. We're starting to come back into this game a bit more now. Still nil-nil. Anything can happen. We only need to nick a goal against... Uh-oh. Yeah, that's the thing. At nil-nil, we just need to nick a goal in this game. It doesn't have to be a, a battering of any sort. Just nick something. Get yourself a really good home win against a top side. Well, not a top side. One of the uh, the better teams in this division. Oh, and Carter. Oh, here we go. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Those really do need to be... They need to be aimed for Afuri. Right, striker changes are definitely necessary. Mm, he's got good match fitness. So I'm actually going to get Nigord off for Brennan O'Neill out on the wing here. I don't want to want to throw it on attacking or anything because we a point against the team who were above us isn't the worst result in the world, right? Can Afori win a header? He, well, he sort of did <laughs> in the sense that I don't know if he won it or not, but it didn't go to our player, which is all that really matters. Jensen, can Betzer get out to him and make a tackle? Haven't seen much of Betzer so far in this game. Horsland, Gray. Clitton. There's a lot of players called Clitton, I've noticed lately. Gray again. Out wide for Clitton. He needs to get... Somebody needs to make a block here. There's a guy on the edge of the box. Knudsen. Oh, good Johnson again. Long range from a lot of their shots, but we've not done well enough. It's really a tough choice here. Do we try and push for the uh, 
for the winner in the late stages of this game? Or do we just accept that what we've got is actually not a bad result? Betzer is going to lose the ball, isn't he? Yep. Can he win it back or something? Looks over the top. Christensen's in. He's got the wrong side of his man. Can he score from there? No. Good save for Johnson. Keeping us in this game at the moment. I'm thinking maybe going and attacking would be a bad thing right about now. Um, because it might just open up more spaces for them. And if we get away with a point, it might not be the end of the world. Uh, no foul. Good. Strikers have been somewhat isolated today. Oh, good lord. Christensen's in again. And Good Johnson makes a save again. They're getting a lot of chances. Can we change anything? Is there anything we could really do here to make any kind of difference? Um, it's all very well having a target man, but unless they're actually aiming the passes for the target man, is there anything we can really do about that? Um, no, you see... I wish there was a way that you could encourage these guys to... Uh, should we just go route one, maybe? Oh, that's not what I meant to press. I wish there was a way you could encourage your midfielders to pass it to the target man, essentially. Um, pass into space, maybe? Is there a way to... Nah, we'll, we'll just go with that for now. There's... Trying to go a bit more route one. Hit a fourie, let him win some headers against them, because that's what we really have him in this team to do. Christensen, Knudsen. Oh, he's going to shoot first time, you think? Yep, yeah, okay. I mean, a draw wouldn't be a bad result. It's still a point. And it's not like we've been good enough to get a win in this game. And Carter over the top. O'Neill's in. Oh, what a chance. We've actually, to be fair to us, created some of the better opportunities in this game, despite not exactly doing a great deal. Brendan O'Neill probably could have done better with that, to be honest. We do seem to have perked up a bit later on with this uh, going route one type of option. Franson's over the top again. Can he square it for someone? Oh, Alan, just back post. Brendan O'Neill would have had a tap in. Tell you what, the last few minutes of this game has been all us. Brendan O'Neill again. Can he get the cross in this time? Goes all the way back from Carter. Just need one good moment. That's a great ball for Gunnarsson. Ball in. O'Neill! Oh, what a save. <laughs> what a moment that was as well. We've really stepped it up the last couple of seconds of this game. Well, going route one seems to be an option we can try in the future. We probably could have won that at the end, but I I'll take a point. It keeps us five points above the drop zone, which is, which is where we want to be. I am actually happy with that result. They look extremely delighted and they kind of should be. Betzer wasn't great when he came on, um, but I guess match fitness, once it starts to come back to us, could, oh, we could have won that game. I really think we'll struggle against Esbier in the next one, though. We do also have a third affiliate now. This is B909, so Battle of the Bees, so to speak. Um, they're just another amateur side, but it's allowing us to send some players out on loan, which I think is very important. We did already have this stuff done. I just wanted to split up some of this knowledge in between the games. And in terms of the players we've got out on loan, you can see there's quite a few, mostly at Ringstead Colding. Um, we can't put any players to B909 just yet, but Halkar Jakobsen has been excellent. Eight goals in 10 games out on loan. Niall Porter's doing well for Ringstead as well. Ringstead are just looking quite decent with some of our players involved. Um, so that's, that's quite nice, isn't it? So we've just had an update and apparently now Runar Ingolson is now a potential Super League talent, which is very nice to hear. Morton Lawson has finally signed his first professional contract with the club too, which is very, very important. And Alan Franson is now considered a decent player for most teams at this division, so that's good. Whilst we're on the topic of Alan Franson, um, he hasn't left, as you can see, obviously, but no club's even put a bid in for him in the summer. And now that he's considered decent for this level, I was actually surprised that they didn't. Um, and he seems quite content to stay for the moment. I think in the summer we might struggle to hang on to him. Um, but that's just a bridge we're going to have to cross when we come to it. So for this game, I'm going to switch Ofori and Nigard over because as much as things didn't go to plan in that game, I do want to have um, Ofori in the middle because I think that's where he's going to be best. And we're also going to bring in um, Oliver Betzer in this role here. I'm going to try him for a few games. If it doesn't work out, we can go back to Borup and play Betzer in the away tactic in a situation where he's probably a little bit more comfortable. I might also play and Carter today, um, because he has been excellent this season. I think he thoroughly deserves his place in the team, quite frankly. Right, and that concludes our team for today's game against Esbio. It's going to be tough, but they, they beat Vale in their last game as well. So, I don't know. I think it's going to be tough. And also, I think they play a 4-3-3. So it's going to be a battle of the three striker systems today. So expect goals is what I will say on that one. They seem relaxed, so that, that's good. We've got lots of options up our sleeves if things start to go wrong. We can go route one, we can try attacking, we've got overload, we've got all sorts of... Uh, potential plan Bs in this game. Um, when things inevitably go, that's better. Afori actually won a header. That's more like it. Nigard would probably have lost that chance. Good Johnson. Um, Kurga are beating Marian Lees, which is probably for the best, actually, um, since they're, you know, they're one of the lesser teams with the lesser points. So that's nice football, actually. Gunnarsson. Into the channel for Franson. Can he go back post or will he have to shoot himself? Digs it out. And, well, um, a little unsure as to what that was supposed to be there. Ram Kielder. Now we've got a problem, though. It's three on three at the other end. And in comes Betzer. Oh, no, Oliver. Oh, a huge mistake from Oliver Betzer. They nearly cost us. The main team I'm worried about is Frem. If they start finding some form, then I would be a little bit worried. because Oh, that's not great, is it? Um, yeah, Frem is the one I'm worried about. Because if they do start to find some form, we, we could be in trouble. 
um, because it would only take us to lose a few games and them having a couple of good wins, as we've done at times this year, uh, for things to go, start to go a bit tits up for us. Oh, what the hell even happened there? Things have started to go off the boil a bit for us here. Ofuri, can he knock it? Oh, Benson needs to look out wide. And Carter, France a good turn. Oh, what a hell of a hit that was from Alan Franson. First chance of the game for us, really. Counts as a long shot. I thought he was in the box, but hey, maybe that's not the definition of a long shot. Franson's corner goes short for Gunnarsson, and that is dreadful. Betzer, got to be careful he doesn't get caught up the pitch here. Ofuri, Nigor, Franson. Oh, another good chance from us there. That's better, working it into the box. Nice. Franson's corner, this time whips it in, and it's it's in the back of the net. It's Mikel Nigor, and we are winning against Esbia. This is not a drill. We've been really really good so far in this game created some good opportunities Franson's ball whipped in Larson with the strike but hey in the end Mikel Nigar getting in there and making it 1-0 against the runner play a tiny bit but my goodness and it's an instant equalizer good stuff uh Skiva are winning as well which probably doesn't help I can't believe that straight away damn it literally just ball straight in set piece gone Johansson just easy header for him that's that's not good is it we've actually done all right limiting them to only one shot on target so far Benson can he switch it through for Carter? Uh, oh, wow. This is not bad, you know. We're actually putting in a pretty stellar performance against one of the better sides in this league. And Carter, over the top for a Furi, brings it down, shoots, and it's well saved again. I cannot stress how good I think we've actually been today. Ramkilda doesn't mean we're going to get anything from this game, of course. Um, But at least I'm seeing things I'm very proud of so far. Uh, we just need that one clearance that finds its man. I think we might need to go a bit more long ball in the second half. Um, because a lot of these clearances oh, aren't quite getting long enough. I am very pleased with that first half. There's a few little issues here and there, but we've, I'd say we've maybe been the better side. It's hard to say. Um, I'm happy with the performance so far. I'll keep it up. The one change I am going to make, though, is we are going to go a tiny bit more long ball in this second half. And I might switch a Fourier over to a target man, because you can see, again, he's been the, the worst performing player in this team tonight. I don't know how pacey he is. Is he quick? He's not slow. Um... We'll have to see. I think Target Man maybe in the second half try and aim some passes for him with this longer approach. See if we can win some knockdowns and see what happens with that. Franson's ball. And, oh, he's been fouled. Nice. Good Johnson looking long this time. Nigard. I don't know why they're aiming it at Nigard. Um, really, really don't. Right, here we go. And Carter. Campbell. Look. Oh, my life. Leung. And well saved for Good Johnson. He's just bailed us out massively there. Uh-oh. Space out wide. And he's going to find his man, surely. Lund. He's got all these players to aim for. And Ling. Oh, good stuff. Benson gets a tackle in. Vilsom. Yeah, even these just little 50-50 challenges, we're not winning any of them. Oh, what on earth? It looked like two of my players went for that ball and they both missed it. That was such a strange goal. I want to see this again. That was really weird. The ball's played out wide, which is fair enough. And you know he's going to thump this into the box. But I thought we'd got that covered, frankly. Oh, <laughs> they just sort of stood there. GG, guys. Um, Okay. Changes are afoot. Um, first change is, that is going to be afoot is bets are off, Borup on. Uh, and Carter, they've been okay today. Um, and from the striker's perspective, we don't really have a lot of options. We've got Booyah, I guess, but I don't think it's really worth bringing him on. I think it might be better, actually, to get... Switch a few things up like this, maybe. Um, I know it's three subs. I know that always comes back to bite me, particularly when it's early on. But I'm also going to go more attacking. Uh, maybe pass into space a bit. No, nah, we don't want to pass into space when we've got target man on the pitch. Uh, we are going to close down Lund a bit more. I'm a bit annoyed about that. I think we've played all right today and probably deserve a bit better. I really feel like we're good enough to get a draw from this game. Campbell, a Fourie, that's more like it. Nigard over the top, France, and he's one touch shoot. Oh, Alan. He's had a few of those lately and they've all been whiffed. I can't help but feel like we're a bit unlucky in this game so far. Larson. Oh, God. They're just that little bit better in the areas that are very important to be a little bit better in. And there you go. That's 3-1. Uh, that's a shame, actually. We've played quite well. But they've got that little bit higher caliber of player that can just win balls in this situation here. Brink wins it, finds his man in the channel, and then back post goal. It's a shame, but we've done that same thing to a few time, uh, to a few teams this season, so it's, we can't really complain. Um, right, we might as well go overload at this point then. Oh, wrong button. We're going to go overload and we're going to go route one for the final 25 minutes and see if we can't nick something from this game. Malwarebytes is telling me I can upgrade. I don't care and it's 4-1 now. Oh my god. That is most annoying. Um, this time from a, well, from a corner. I haven't conceded a set piece goal for a little while from a corner at least. Oh, that's... 4-1 really? God, they're winning everything now. We might have to turn this off of overload because we're not going to get anything for the game. Oh my life. Okay, yeah, off of overload it goes. I'm I don't know where this sudden 
burst of ability has come from from them. Am I the only one? I can't be the only one that thinks that 5-1 is a bit harsh from us um, in this game. We had three players here, all going for the ball. And it's just, look at this. Oh my god. Sometimes it just is not your day, is it? Sometimes you're the hammer and sometimes you're the nail. Um, today we are very much the nail. I think it's very important to bear in mind that we actually took the lead in this game and played very well through the opening few moments of it. Um, well, the opening little while, in fact. Say Peo into the channel for Franson. Can he square it for someone? He does? No? Benson? Franson? There we go. That's one back, I guess. He's going to be offside, isn't he, I expect? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Our talisman, uh, Alan Franson, has been anything but talismanic today. He's had a few opportunities to take chances, and he's not taken them. And it's really, really cost us in the end here. Say, Peo has lost out again. Uh, Ramskilda, they are just a better football team, aren't they, really? It's when it comes down to it. Campbell looks up the pitch for Say, Peo. Right, Franson, make that run. Somebody make that run. Looks over the top for a fourie. Here we go. Chance. One touch. Finish. No. Nothing still. Unbelievable. I've got to say, I feel 5-1 is a bit harsh. Oh, and another save from the keeper. Um, we've been just given the absolute willy in this game, to be honest. Um, and I feel like we should have done better. Um, we're looking at the key passes we had in this game, we've created good opportunities, and they are just, they blew us away in a quick little spell of, oh my god. Uh, but that's the difference between good and very, very good, isn't it, really? Okay, so since we're doing double live comms from now on, I figure next episode it'd be great to do... Because look at that, we've got Vidovrit, Marion List, and Frem in three successive games. Um, we've also got Veya up next, so that's going to be tough. But I figured, why not do the games against Marion List at home and Frem away? Because those two could be really, really key in deciding whether we stay up this season. Because um, if we could get a couple of wins in there, that would be massive for us. Marion List at home is very important. Frem away is probably even more important. Vidovra away, although they aren't our direct rival, is important because it's basically a chance for three points. So yeah, that's what we're going to do in the next episode. So if you have enjoyed the episode, do be sure to drop a like on the video. That'd be amazing. I know the results haven't exactly been um, top draw today uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but we did get a point in the first game and we actually looked all right against Esbio. They just were a cut above the rest. But yeah, drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I'll see you guys soon um, for what is hopefully going to be a more pleasant episode regarding the results because we do need to pick up some wins um, again because it's going to start to get a little bit squeaky towards the end of the season because if Frem or Marion least or any of those sides start to put together a really good run if the fixtures start to fall their way we could find ourselves getting sucked back into the relegation battle and um, that's not a place I really want to be so I'll see you guys soon thank you so much for watching bye bye